Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. My name is Stefano Carrera, I am a journalist for the Italian Economic Daily newspaper, Il Sole 24 Ore. Today our special guest is Mr. Kozo Yamamoto, he's a politician, he's a member of the parliament, but, but more than that, he's an economist and he's considered one of the architects of the Abenomics, the sets of uh, economic policies that uh, were introduced uh, by the Prime Minister Abe in order to try to spur the economy and to end the deflation in this country. So we are living in interesting times. Uh, right now the Bank of Japan decide not to make any new move uh, for, and uh, also um, the Bank of Japan gave a sti still a fairly optimistic assessment of the economy, but, but uh, for instance, uh, uh, Mr. Um, Yamamoto, that is a true believer in the virtue of the monetary policy, is calling for further easing at the end of this month, when uh, the new outlook of uh, the Bank of Japan will probably lower the scenario for growth and for uh, prices in this country. And today also the Prime Minister will uh, change uh, half of the Minister uh, for a fresh start of uh, the policy action. And uh, we are talking about the phase two of Abenomics. Uh, phase one, uh, uh, there, there are different opinions and uh, some people think uh, that uh, Abenomics could stall on uh, the global uh, economy slowdown, but also on some domestic issues like cons consumption. Consum consumption in Japan is uh, still um, uh, not uh, at uh, good, uh, particularly good uh, levels. And also, uh, <coughs> the day before yesterday, the negotiator, uh, negotiators in Atlanta, US, they reached an agreement on TPP, and uh, probably is, uh, will be very important uh, for uh, Japan, because TPP is, uh, uh, is also a free trade agreement between US and Japan, something that was unthinkable a uh, few years ago. And uh, so probably some, uh, I won't say gaiatsu, but some uh, uh, you know, international commitments of uh, Japan uh, would uh, probably help to accelerate changes in the Japanese economy. So Mr. Yamamoto is a native of uh, Fukuoka, and uh, he told me that he likes Italian food, and uh, he likes tango. And uh, for him, uh, since it takes two to tango, he is a believer that uh, monetary policy and government should act together. And uh, one, uh, the title of one of his publications in the past was How the Bank of Japan Ruined the Japanese Economy. <laughs> so we will uh, uh, listen to him and we have the opportunity to, to ask questions to him. And uh, first of all, put your mobile um, on the manner mode, please, and uh, please extend a warm welcome to uh, Mr. Yamamoto. Thank you, Mr. Correa, for introducing me, uh, and I'm very pleased to be here uh, at the prestigious uh, Foreign Correspondent Club of Japan. Uh, I just talk, talk, I just touch on the the origin of Abenomics. Uh, uh, it started about three and a half years ago, right after the, the great earthquakes. I've been criticizing the Bank of Japan's monetary policy for a long time, but uh, after the earthquakes, I thought, uh, unless we do something, uh, Japanese economies will be dead. Uh, so I thought the necessity to establish uh, the political movement and uh, build the, the federation uh, to proceed uh, very uh, radical monetary policy uh, and introducing inflation targeting policy. Uh, so uh, then I found in the short column on the newspaper that Mr. Abe was talking something critical against uh, BOJ. Uh, at that time, uh, nobody thought Mr. Abe would come back again. Uh, but I thought, okay, Mr. Abe will be the good person to become the chairman of this federation uh, study group uh, in LDP. So I went up to Mr. Abe's office and asked him to be the chairman of this committee. 
And uh, I told him, if you really want to come back again, then you should come back as the person of economy, not the person of education, not the person of uh, constitution or uh, security issue alone. Uh, he, I, I'm surprised he, he said uh, yes uh, at once, and he accepted the chairmanship. Then we started uh, the study group meeting, and we invited uh, Professor Kiko Iwata, now he's the vice governor of BOJ, and also uh, Professor uh, <coughs> uh, uh, Yale Professor uh, okay. Hamada-san, Koichi Hamada. Uh, and the contents of this uh, study group's uh, meeting uh, was put in Mr. Abe's brain. Uh, that's the reflectionary, reflectionist policy. Uh, and uh, he really understood uh, the necessity of uh, the changing the monetary policy completely. And uh, so he invited, uh, uh, then we, we, he won in the election in the presidency and also uh, LDP won in the election we got the, the government. And uh, he invited Mr. Kroda uh, as the governor of uh, BOJ and uh, uh, Mr. Kroda uh, responded uh, and uh, presented the so-called Kuruda Bazooka. Uh, and uh, we could succeed in the monetary policy 180 degrees. Uh, uh, then we uh, came into uh, the, the, the area of uh, uh, inflation targeting uh, policy, a type of uh, monetary policy. Uh, I think so far, Abenomic, uh, and uh, also he added uh, two uh, uh, other arrows, uh, uh, second arrow fiscal policy and third arrow the growth strategy. Uh, but basically, the, the essence of abenomics is the first arrow, monetary policy. Because uh, the most essential uh, necessity was to change the people's mindset from deflationary expectation towards mild inflationary expectation. Otherwise, economy wouldn't work. If people's mind was caught uh, by, the, uh, by the deflationary expectation, then nobody wants to consume now. They just want to wait until the price would go down. And the uh, corporation wouldn't make any investment. Uh, so uh, economy uh, stays sluggish for a long time. Uh, we, we call it lost decade uh, in the past. Uh, but uh, because of the radical change of monetary policy, we could succeed to change the people's mindset from deflation expectation towards a mild inflation expectation. Uh, but we think uh, it's not enough uh, yet. Uh, but anyway, uh, the change really started and uh, everything uh, started to uh, move. Uh, then uh, exchange rate uh, uh, weakened and uh, stock market uh, uh, rose. Uh, before the abenomics, the yen rate was um, uh, 80 yen per dollar, now 120 yen. And uh, Nikkei was 8,500 yen, now uh, over 18,000. Uh, so in that sense, uh, because of this uh, radical change of monetary policy, we could, maybe we are succeeding to change people's mindset from deflation expectation towards mild uh, inflation expectation. Then, uh, uh, so other factors are uh, showing uh, good signs. Uh, because of the weak, weak to yen, the corporate profit uh, rose, and uh, uh, labor market improved, and uh, unemployment uh, rate was almost 5%. Now the uh, uh, it's now the 3.4%, and uh, job offer rate was 0 0.85 uh, to uh, 1.2. Uh, uh, four now. So in that sense, 
uh, everything is going towards uh, better uh, size. Uh, the uh, eternal target of economics, well, I would say any economic policies, is to attain the society with full employment, uh, with uh, proper growth and the proper, uh, which means proper increase of uh, revenues. Uh, that kind of society is the most desirable, and uh, uh, that's what we are targeting towards uh, uh, this uh, uh, situation. Uh, but we made big mistakes, uh, well, only one big mistake uh, last year, that was uh, consumption tax hike uh, in April. Uh, at first we thought we could overcome, uh, because of the good signs of uh, abenomics uh, in uh, 2013, we could overcome the adverse effect of uh, consumption tax hike, uh, but it was too... Uh, 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 it was a mistake. Uh, after consumption tax hike, every economic uh, figures uh, slowed down. And uh, now, then uh, last year, we decided to delay the next consumption tax hike, one and a half. Uh, that's movement I read uh, and advised Mr. Abe, hey, we should delay the, the next uh, consumption tax hike, and uh, he accepted that, and we did. So now the situation stabilized uh, from the very weak economy, uh, but not yet recovered yet. Uh, so at this moment, uh, the situation is stabilized, but didn't show the, uh, the enough recovery yet. And uh, so, which means we need something to do. Uh, this is uh, what we expect uh, this new cabinet uh, starting from today. Uh, Mr. Abe announced uh, so-called the new three arrows. Uh, but I thought uh, that kind of presentation uh, will make some misunderstanding uh, to many people. Uh, I would suggest him, actually I mailed him and I, I suggested him uh, what to do. Uh, that is, hey, we, we should go back to the original uh, three arrows and add another arrow as the fourth arrow. Uh, that is income redistribution policy. Uh, the, most, the biggest problem uh, facing now in the Japanese economy is the weakened consumption. Uh, consumption dropped after the, uh, the tax hike uh, last year, uh, but it's not still recovered uh, yet. Uh, and also, consumption is showing some more weaker, weakening uh, uh, indications. So we are worried about this weak uh, consumption uh, side. Uh, private investment is recovering, but uh, not enough. And if the consumption keeps uh, weak, sluggish uh, for a long time, then uh, it may affect uh, on private investment uh, side too. So, and also uh, we have uh, slower recovery of uh, export because of uh, outside economies weakening, particularly China economy and European economy. But uh, these things we cannot uh, control. So we should stick to uh, our domestic economy uh, to strengthen and to uh, get back the, uh, the moment of recovery. Uh, so in that sense, the essence is uh, to uh, take some policies to make uh, stronger uh, consumption. So in that sense, uh, we really need income redistribution policy. This is 
this should be the fourth arrow uh, of the abenomics. Uh, this is what I'm advising to Mr. Abe. Uh, to make this policy, uh, we have uh, uh, made uh, some uh, some suggestions. For instance, uh, uh, consumption is so weak because we analyzed the how, why the consumption is so weak. Uh, then we found out the big portion of uh, consumers are consisted by non-income people, uh, mostly uh, pension recipients. Uh, the difference of uh, consumption tax hike of 97 from 3 to 5% and uh, 2014 from 5 to 8% was the pension recipients uh, population became one and a half bigger, times bigger. So this population occupies almost 30% of uh, Japanese uh, old population. And uh, these people are suffering from consumption tax hike and price hike and also the price hike because of a weaker yen. So we have to help these people, otherwise th their consumption just keeps uh, shrink. Uh, so in that sense, first thing we have to do is to uh, give subsidy to these people, particularly uh, pension recipients. For instance, if we pay to them uh, 30,000 yen uh, every year, uh, because uh, we calculated uh, their real dis uh, disposal income in, uh, decreased by almost 2.5, uh, uh, 25,000 yen. So if we give them 30,000 yen, it will uh, well uh, offset uh, their loss uh, in disposal income. Also, the pension fund recipients, uh, they suffer from the uh, decreased uh, pension payment uh, because of uh, so-called uh, macroeconomic uh, slide. Uh, so these people are suffering now. And also we have to consider uh, very low income people. They get income, but uh, it's very low, uh, mostly young people. Uh, so if we pay to them 40,000 yen uh, to these uh, low income people, uh, the income level less than uh, 3 million yen. Uh, these people, uh, we calculate uh, uh, 1, 1.9 million. Uh, the pension fund uh, recipients are 30 million uh, people. So we pay 30,000 to 30 million uh, pension recipients. Uh, we need 0 0.9 trillion yen. And if we pay 40,000 to uh, low-income people, uh, 19 million people, it needs 0 0.76 trillion yen. And also, uh, it's included in the, the new Mr. Abe's uh, uh, three hours. Uh, uh, the families who have children, they, they are suffering too. So, uh, and also, to raise the, the birth rate is very important to help them. So in that sense, uh, we include uh, in this uh, uh, framework, if we pay to them 50,000 yen, uh, that population is 80 million. Uh, it needs 0 0.9 trillion yen. So altogether, we need almost 2.5 trillion yen. Uh, do you have any res uh, revenues for them? Yes, we have, because of our mix. Uh, because of economics, uh, tax revenue increased uh, last year and, and increasing this year too. Last year, uh, tax revenue increased uh, more than we have expected by uh, 1.6 trillion yen. So we can use uh, half of them because the half of uh, this uh, excess uh, revenues uh, goes to reconstruction works in Tohoku area. And, uh, 
And also, we expect tax revenues will increase more than you have expected this year, this fiscal year, maybe three or four trillion year at least. And so we can use some of them. And also, uh, the Ministry of Finance, uh, when they uh, 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 prepare the budget, uh, they have uh, rooms uh, for in interest payments uh, on the national bonds uh, debt. Uh, so from this, we more, uh, every year we can use uh, 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 this uh, uh, <clears throat> factor, uh, maybe almost one trillion yen. And also, because of abnormics, uh, uh, foreign exchange uh, trust fund uh, has increased uh, their wealth. Uh, and also, pension fund increased their wealth. So we can use from, maybe from foreign exchange uh, trust fund, uh, maybe around one, one trillion yen. So we can easily raise the revenues uh, to make this kind of uh, policies, uh, not only to the income redistribution uh, purpose, but maybe we can include some other uh, expenditures. For instance, the uh, some uh, subsidies towards agriculture uh, people uh, because of the uh, TPP or, or some other uh, uh, public expenditures for uh, uh, <coughs> uh, for protecting uh, the national hazardous, uh, uh, all these things. So altogether, I think we need at least five trillion yen uh, supplementary budget. Uh, uh, this year. Uh, so by doing this, particularly by income redistribution policy, uh, we can, we expect the consumption will pick up again. And uh, if the consumption uh, goes back towards the, uh, the natural route, then we expect the uh, economic recovery. Uh, BOJ didn't do uh, decided to uh, do nothing uh, today because I think BOJ people are a little bit worried about if we they eased more, then the, it may weaken the yen. Then it may suffer these people again. So uh, they are expecting uh, some uh, policies, uh, something like this. Uh, if the government decided to uh, to make the income redistribution policy and uh, and take out any worries uh, to these people, then BOJ is uh, at ease to make an uh, next step. So in that sense, I expect uh, uh, if the this new cabinet uh, try to make it clear, uh, we get into this kind of uh, uh, new fourth arrow, then the BOJ will work together. Uh, then uh, I think uh, we expect uh, to recover the Japanese economy uh, next year. But if we fail to do that, I'm a little bit worried about uh, the, the future picture of our Japanese economy. Okay, now I'm ready to accept your questions. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Yamamoto. So we will wait and see if really it will take a center stage on the political agenda, the issue of redistributing income. But very interesting what you said. So um, let's open the floor first to the um, professional journal members. Siegfried Nittel, um, correspondent of the Austrian newspaper, The Standard. Um, you talked about a new uh, fourth arrow, but you didn't talk about structural reform. Say, some economists say in the last week that uh, uh, labor market reform, this would be the most important point. You talked about uh, low income of young people. Uh, really, a labor market reform. I think it would it would mean to change 
the non-regular standard, perhaps to in to uh, to uh, um, narrow the gap between regular worker and non-regular worker. It, but it means, I think, a really labor market reform would mean perhaps the end of the lifelong employment. And some economists say, uh, Mr. Abe doesn't want to change a lifelong employment system because he is in fear of the upper house election next year. So what, what, what do you think uh, will Mr. Abe do with uh, labor market reform? Mm, OK. Uh, yeah, it's a good point. Uh, I didn't uh, touch on the uh, growth strategy, but because uh, where well, the growth strategy, everybody has different ideas, and uh, we are expecting uh, many criticism. But I think uh, we are uh, trying to do something. But uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, labor market reform is not enough. Uh, we presented two legislations uh, to this uh, diet session. But we could pass only one legislation, which is the uh, to ease the conditions uh, for part-time jobs. And the second legislation, so-called white color exemption, we failed to pass, and that's be left over. So for the next uh, diet session, we have to uh, tackle with this uh, legislation. And uh, eventually, I personally uh, expected. After finished to this, these two legislations, then we should uh, tackle with uh, uh, another very difficult uh, legislation, which allows monetary solution on uh, dismissal dispute. Uh, uh, if we succeed to pass this kind of legislation, then it makes uh, our environment for business people easier, particularly fr from foreign investment. Uh, so this is what uh, we have in mind. But uh, unless to finish uh, the second legislation, we cannot start to talk. Uh, because uh, even for the first legislation, we, we faced very uh, strong resistance from the uh, labor union people. But uh, monetary solution uh, for this missile dispute is very necessary uh, to, to Japanese economy uh, because the workers in the big corporations, they, they belong to the labor unions. They are protected. But many general workers uh, working in medium and small size companies, they have no protection. They can easily be fired. And they cannot uh, fight in the court because they, they didn't have any time, they didn't have any money. So many, many uh, Japanese uh, workers are, are suffering from this kind of situation. So by introducing this kind of uh, monetary solution, then it's help to protect them. So in that sense, uh, uh, we have to get uh, to that. But uh, as you mentioned, uh, maybe it will be uh, difficult to finish it by the next uh, election uh, for the House of Councillors. But anyway, we have to uh, finish up the, the, the homeworks uh, for the second registration uh, in the next uh, uh, session. Uh, but we get try to uh, uh, the third uh, registration in the future, I hope. <laughs> And uh, on the third row, uh, we tried uh, to change the agricultural association uh, system, and we passed the legislation to make it possible. Uh, so it's a small but uh, one step uh, forward. And uh, because of TPP, we have to discuss maybe uh, uh, basic fundamental change on agriculture policy. I personally uh, think in the agriculture policy, uh, I think the best thing is to introduce decoupling uh, uh, type in, uh, in Europe uh, to 
serves the, the farm as a directory. Uh, uh, and uh, forget about the prices. And also uh, to allow uh, private corporations to get into the agricultural business. Uh, so TPP uh, makes some pressures uh, to change, uh, but also TPP shows uh, the futures for the agricultural export. So by showing the, the merits of TPP, and we have to get down and uh, start to discuss the fundamental uh, change of agriculture policy. Uh, I have my, my, uh, my ideas, but uh, it's not so easy, I understand, but uh, we'll try. Uh, but it takes some time, as you mentioned, yes. Thank you. Uh, Andy Staples, Economist Corporate Network. Um, if I understand correctly, you've been calling for further monetary easing from the Bank of Japan. Uh, I think um, today we heard that we're not going to have any further stimulus today, but potentially at the end of this month we might have that. Um, but I wonder if that is the solution. If we look at what's happened uh, since uh, Governor Kuroda has uh, loosened monetary policy, it seems to be exporting multinationals. Uh, and those people invested in the stock market who've benefited. And as you point out, uh, households are, are struggling. Um, rising food prices, a weaker yen, one of the main uh, impacts of, of monetary policy, has meant that um, household spending is, is depressed. So how can further monetary stimulus be a benefit to the economy if most people aren't benefiting from it? And just related to that, you, you mentioned that the, the sales tax hike last year was a mistake in hindsight. What about 2017? We understand that it's in law, it's not just a case of making a decision to defer it, uh, but is there a, a chance that we, we won't see this hike taking place? Thank you. <coughs> yes. Uh, uh, <coughs> you're correct, if the, the BOJ is, uh, BOJ people uh, are a little bit worried about the the uh, outcome of uh, QE3, if we, they do it, then it may weaken the yen again, and uh, it will uh, uh, it may uh, it may uh, hurt the households uh, uh, consumers. That's why I'm uh, talking about the fourth arrow, the income redistribution policy. Uh, to uh, ease their uh, hearts uh, from the weak and yen's uh, price hike. Uh, so probably BOJ people expect uh, the government's uh, at least an announcement to get into this kind of income redistribution policy and to ease the households uh, suffering uh, from the uh, price hike. Uh, then they are uh, settled down and uh, uh, they get uh, some confidence uh, to go ahead. Uh, otherwise, they, they think uh, it's a little bit uh, dangerous uh, to the Japanese economy because the consumption as a whole is weak. So if they hurt more on the households by weakening the yen more, then the consumption uh, as a whole uh, will weaken again. So in that sense, uh, we should work together, fiscal policy, government, and uh, BOJ all together. And uh, next, consumption tax hike. Uh, at this moment, uh, I have to say, we should make we should try to best to make the situation which enables the consumption tax hike as scheduled. Uh, that's why I'm uh, advocating uh, uh, income redistribution policy now uh, and uh, another QE3. 
Uh, by doing that, we expect the economy will recover uh, uh, and uh, get back to the ordinary route. Then it enables the consumption tax hike. But if we fail uh, to recover the consumption and uh, the economy streets keeps uh, weakening and uh, investment uh, will not pick up so much we have expected, then we would have been trouble in, in, in considering the uh, next consumption tax hike. So we have to wait uh, maybe another year, but, uh, uh, but we should do our best to make, uh, uh, to, to make the situation which enables the consumption tax hike uh, next time, I hope. Kevin Bucklin, Bloomberg News. Um, I wanted to ask, um, you're talking about the effects, the bad effects of a weak yen. Uh, I wanted to know how weak is too weak for the yen, do you think? And what do you think about the current exchange rate of uh, 120 per dollar? Usually, uh, politicians are not supposed to <laughs> comment on the rate itself, but, uh, but if I get this kind of question, I usually answer in this way. Uh, reference rate is uh, before the Lehman shock. At that time, the Japanese yen was 124. So around 124 is not a surprise uh, rate. Uh, so in that sense, if BOJ takes uh, QE3, uh, yen will be weakened. And if the range is maybe around 125, uh, so plus minus five, so I mean the 100, between 120, 130, it's not a surprising rate. Joel? Joel? Uh, Joël Legendre, TV5 World, France, and RTL. You talk about TPP, and I'm interested in the, the situation for Japanese uh, farmers and others, consumers. Uh, it looks like we are just watching the tip of the iceberg, the top, the top of the iceberg. And we don't see exactly what's going to be the impact for the Japanese uh, farmers and other people. What do you expect to see? What have you planned? You're talking about compensation for those people because of the TPP. Could you give us a, a clear picture of what is going to happen? Or are we heading to a sort of European scenario sometime where some have lost more than others? Thank you. Uh, I can show the, the very clear picture, but uh, on rice, uh, government uh, announced uh, to purchase the amount uh, which will be the increased import uh, the government will purchase and uh, use as the, the uh, reserves. Uh, so in that sense, the on rice, uh, not the direct uh, effect on farmers. Uh, but uh, uh, pork and beef, maybe uh, do have some effect, but uh, not in at once. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it will take some time. Uh, so we have to be ready uh, to uh, <coughs> uh, make more efficient uh, for uh, producers uh, uh, in this uh, uh, field. Uh, I don't know how much we can uh, help them. Well, but uh, but maybe that'll be we have to face, and that'll be we, we have to accept. So we'll help these farmers, but uh, they have to prepare for the change uh, in the future. Uh, Daniel Lersink, uh, AFP. Uh, in the middle of August, uh, China devalued its yuan currency 
um, raising concerns about, uh, the, uh, about weakness in China's economy and also triggering a, triggering a global rout in, uh, in, in global stock markets. How should Japanese policymakers respond to, uh, uh, to these China worries and the defederation of its currency? <coughs> China economy uh, I, I think uh, China uh, is moving toward uh, from uh, high growth country towards uh, medium growth country. Uh, it's because of the limit of labor uh, <coughs> works force. Uh, in the past, they could expect uh, very cheap labors from inland uh, uh, towards uh, coast uh, lines. But now, they, they could not expect uh, such uh, cheap labors coming from uh, uh, inland. Uh, so, they have to accept the wage hike, which means uh, we call it the risk point. Uh, so, in that sense, they have uh, reached to the risk point, so they cannot expect the high growth from the labor uh, factor. And uh, the, the problem is uh, China may get into the a, uh, a trap of uh, middle-income country, so-called trap of middle-income country, which means they cannot get out of from middle income to higher income uh, country. Uh, the key issue is productivity growth. Uh, the problem of Chinese economy is they, it's very difficult for them to expect productivity growth, technological innovation, because most uh, big companies are national national owned company. This is one reason. And uh, if the national owned company, they have uh, almost uh, uh, monopoly uh, type of uh, position. So they have no incentives to make uh, any uh, 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 inventions. And also, uh, China has a very serious uh, troubles uh, uh, in uh, sustaining uh, intellectual property rights. The central government is pushing. Uh, they understand the, the, the issue, but local government do not understand at all. So it's almost impossible to control the, the, the leakage of uh, intellectual property rights. So as a result, uh, it's very difficult for them. The private companies uh, compete uh, in innovation, uh, something like uh, Japan, something like uh, European countries and uh, the United States. So this is uh, the big worry of a Chinese economy. So in that sense, we have to prepare for the situation. China economy will go get into the medium uh, growth economy. So we can expect uh, higher uh, export growth uh, toward China so anymore. Uh, but I think we can help them uh, uh, in many areas, particularly in uh, environmental issue uh, and also uh, to vitalize the uh, service sector economy. So uh, that's what uh, Xi Jinping understands. Uh, I went to China with Mr. Nikai uh, uh, last, past, last uh, uh, May together with uh, 3,000 uh, visitors together. Uh, Xi Jinping showed up and uh, I wanted to uh, check uh, whether Mr. Xi Jinping has established his uh, leadership and also the Chinese economies, how much he feels uh, China economies slow down uh, hurts uh, 
to his administration. And I, I uh, recognize uh, he established his position, uh, but he's very worried about the, the slowing Chinese economy. And uh, to help uh, it recover, uh, the, he needs the Japanese technology and Japanese money. Uh, so, as, so as a result, he showed up uh, to meet us and uh, at his meeting with Mr. Abe, uh, too. So in that sense, China is uh, in trouble, but I don't think uh, uh, they, don't, uh, they get into crash. Uh, they, they protect the, the crash, but, uh, uh, but uh, they cannot expect the higher growth, uh, 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 something like in the past. Uh, but uh, to keep their economic growth, they need uh, U.S., European, or Japanese uh, money and uh, technologies. And uh, so in that sense, if we show our uh, uh, attitudes to uh, cooperate with them, and uh, we could get a good relationship with China. Uh, so uh, we are very surprised that the, the, about the uh, China's change in, in, in August, uh, but we recognize the, the, the serious troubles, uh, problems in China's economy. So we, we should prepare for that. And uh, I think uh, we have learned from this lesson and uh, maybe next time uh, we'll be able to overcome. Um, thank you, Kozo. It's great to see you here. Uh, you know, you talk about income distribu redistribution. Um, I just want to ask a little bit, because uh, you come originally from the Ministry of Finance. Um, Japan has two taxes that are basically double taxation that take money out of households. One is inheritance tax, and I understand that rules have recently been made to tighten uh, inheritance tax. Secondly, uh, the Ministry insists on taxing dividends uh, at a fairly high rate. Um, and Mr. and Mrs. Watanabe, the, the mythical uh, investor and saver, you know, they're not getting anything on their bank uh, savings uh, because of 15 years of BOJ policy. But uh, why do you have to tax dividends, which have already been taxed by the company paying the tax? And why do you have to tax old people giving money or dead people giving money to the younger generation? Uh, those seem to block income transfer. Any idea that you could change those? <clears throat> well, the, we have uh, uh, the tax on dividends of 20 percent. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in the past, 10 percent, but uh, we increased to 20 percent. Uh, but we think uh, it's not, it's still uh, generous tax because uh, the best way to tax uh, on income is uh, uh, to consolidate all incomes uh, together and uh, and and apply the uh, marginal tax rate. Uh, so in that sense, the higher income people uh, who are uh, paying 45% uh, uh, on, on the uh, regular incomes, uh, but only 20% on dividends. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not uh, equity, equitable. Uh, so in that sense, on dividends, 20% uh, tax on dividends is it, still quite a generous tax. Uh, uh, I think. And inheritance tax, uh, well, Japanese system after the, the World War II, uh, that's what we learned from the United States. The, uh, we introduced tax system. Uh, to stick to equitable very much. And uh, we think uh, extremely wealthy wealth uh, is not a good thing uh, in the society. So to arrange it, we, we bear, uh, we <coughs> uh, bear the, the inheritance tax. And Inheritance tax we, we raised to 
40 uh, percent uh, is it too high? <laughs> Um, well, my, my point is, is, is not that level, mm. but the principle of double taxation. Um, corporates, if I'm a shareholder in mm -hmm. Sony or Honda, mm -hmm. um, I own 1% of that. Uh, they have their annual income and then pay the tax to the government and the local governments. And the remainder is retained earnings. Mm -hmm. I have 1% of that retained earnings. It's mine because I'm a shareholder. If it's held in their bank, or in my bank is theoretically the same. Therefore, paying it to me is not an income paid to me. It is a redistribution of what is already mine. You see, the, the double taxation is true also for inheritance tax. Yeah. So can you just touch on the double taxation mm -hmm. aspect? Uh, <clears throat> yes, we have a uh, long uh, uh, history of uh, this discussion. And, uh, uh, and uh, what Actually, uh, when I was in the Ministry of Finance uh, almost 40 years ago, we, uh, we, we discussed uh, this issue. Uh, to solve this uh, issue, we should introduce a special uh, computation. Uh, it's very complicated. Uh, we need some uh, complicated uh, computation. So, uh, so that's why we, we just put on 20% rather lower uh, rate on dividends. Uh, but you're, you're right, the, the, to solve this issue. Uh, uh, and also, we have a long history of discussion. The, what is the cooperation? <laughs> it's a real one, or the, it's, it's, it's a uh, uh, shadow one or something. This, these kind of discussions are uh, Still on the way, uh, but but one solution is uh, lower dividends uh, rate, uh, rate rate on dividends. Uh, but uh, you're correct; uh, we do have this kind of uh, problems. A question from me. I mean, especially to clarify the important things that uh, that you said, because Abenomics has been accused of uh, favoring rich people and the big business, and uh, maybe all QE policies probably are a favor to the rich because they inflate asset price. So if I have uh, one million in uh, the stock exchange and goes to two million, it's a gift from, from me from the go government policy. And so I will be able to buy for free <laughs> a Lamborghini and Ferrari. I read the statistic yesterday that uh, in, the, in the last six months, Lamborghini says in, in Japan tripled and the Ferrari doubled. So now you, a key architect, a key inspirator of Abenomics is saying that it's time to uh, support also the low income people because by the way, they are the category of people that are most probably will spend all additional income that they will receive. So you as a considered true believer in the monetary policy, at this stage you think that you also probably you think that the monetary policy is not enough, but uh, uh, abenomics need a relaunching of bo both the first arrow and the second arrow. That means a fiscal stimulus, but in the form of uh, supporting the uh, low-income people. Is uh, correct? It is uh, so. <coughs> the, the, the new front of, uh, of abenomics is a progressive uh, helping mm. low-income people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, you are correct. Uh, I, I think we need uh, uh, good uh, coordination of uh, fiscal and monetary policy. Uh, so, exactly, uh, you're right. Uh, you, uh, when uh, at, the f uh, at, at my introduction, uh, you mentioned the uh, we need uh, tango dance <laughs> uh, with the government and BOJ, uh, fiscal and monetary policy. Yes. Actually, with the uh, numbers out today, 99.9% uh, .9 of all money printed by the central bank has ended up as excess reserves um, of uh, <coughs> banks inside the, the central bank. So it hasn't actually um, 
uh, hasn't actually uh, left the, the vault of the central bank. So um, all you would do with, uh, with printing more money is drive down the yen and make absolutely sure that the TPP you signed on um, on uh, Monday will be uh, torpedoed um, when you next do QE. I'm trying to work out what you could possibly do uh, in order to create a situation for, um, for, for being able to um, increase VAT. So you've got to make a decision by June. Uh, when you hiked in um, April last year, you got two quarters of negative GDP. Then you waited a while, and then you hiked the taxes on uh, mini cars and got another quarter of GDP, and possibly, um, possibly two negative. So you've now only got a very, very few months in order to create the decision so that uh, uh, Mr. Abe can uh, announce that he's going ahead with the VAT hike in June of next year when he gets the, um, the quarterly GDP numbers out. I put it to you that there isn't a snowball's chance in hell that um, that, that VAT hike is going through. No, I didn't catch you. Sorry, I didn't catch your question so correctly. Every time you hike the VAT, you've uh, totally crushed the economy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you're in a position to um, to be able to uh, to announce a VAT hike in uh, in June mm -hmm. next year, particularly with a uh, an upper house election to think about. Mm -hmm. That's what I worried about. Uh, but now, at this moment, uh, uh, we should correct the, the, the root of the economy. The, 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 the root, uh, the Japanese uh, economy uh, at present is uh, going a little bit downside uh, route uh, more than we have expected, uh, which enables the uh, consumption tax like uh, uh, April of, uh, 2017. Uh, so if this uh, lower route continues, may, maybe it may be become difficult, uh, as you mentioned, uh, next year. Uh, so we have to wait until next, uh, uh, until the middle of next year. But uh, uh, so. That's why we have to uh, make, uh, move, make our actions uh, at this moment, uh, fiscal and monetary policy, uh, particularly fiscal re income redistribution policy, to go back towards the uh, regular route. Uh, but uh, the situation you have mentioned, uh, uh, if we continue this uh, route uh, may become clear, and uh, uh, that's what I, I worried about. Okay. Yeah, just one more question on uh, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, because uh, this week they down, uh, down, downgraded Japan's growth outlook, and they also warned the authorities to, to, uh, to deal with Japan's national debt. Um, what's your what do you think? Mm. <clears throat> On national debt issue, uh, uh, I have no worry about that. Uh, many people are talking about the Japan is uh, uh, suffering from the uh, huge uh, amount of uh, national debt outstanding. Uh, but uh, I think the Japanese fiscal situation is improving uh, in, in, uh, in, in uh, uh, remarkable uh, pace because BOJ is purchasing national bonds, okay? Once BOJ purchases national bonds, then our burden on national bonds is gone. Ministry of Finance people never tell us this one, and uh, most uh, journalists uh, didn't understand this uh, logic, but uh, particularly Standard Poor and Moody's, uh, they didn't understand at all. Uh, once BOJ purchases national bonds, then Ministry of Finance pays interest uh, to the bonds uh, which BOJ uh, holds. But the, the revenues uh, of BOJ, uh, after they used for their some cost for uh, employees, uh, they go back to the, the uh, Ministry of Finance as the uh, BOJ's benefit. So 
Once BOJ purchased Nasham, now the BOJ purchased almost uh, uh, 250 trillion yen, something like that, maybe more. Uh, so out of uh, essential uh, 1,000 trillion yen, almost 250 are gone. And, uh, uh, but uh, if you look uh, for the future, we understand primary balance decides the direction of uh, fiscal situation. So we commit to, the, uh, to make the primary balance plus. Uh, but if you look at the, uh, the past data, uh, primary balance uh, is almost determined by the nominal GDP growth. So if we succeed to have the uh, appropriate nominal GDP growth, we don't have to worry about uh, anything about our own fiscal situation. And now, without any inflation, BOJ can purchase national bonds more. So we will improve the uh, fiscal situations uh, at a remarkable pace. So nothing to worry about. Okay, maybe a very quick last question because uh, we are going over time. Thank you very much for this explanation about economics. Just um, something that has been, uh, I've been very, uh, I've been wondering about why uh, there are no incentives for entrepreneurs, especially uh, you know the people who are young and have some ideas. And just to give you one example. Uh, Facebook is just one person started this company. It's now 10,000 people and it's $250 billion capital, market capitalization. Looks to me like, you know, if you can trying to, if you can try to create um, such an entrepreneur culture, uh, eventually you will have to burn some money and that burn money will cause inflation as well. So everyone's going to win. Why there is no entrepreneurship in Japan, especially for among the young people? Yeah, th th that's a big uh, question we do have uh, two. Uh, we try to make uh, the environment more favorable to uh, invest and entrepreneurs. So we committed to lower the corporate income tax uh, towards 20s levels. Uh, and also uh, we have uh, tax incentives uh, towards venture capital investment. Uh, but still, uh, in Japan, uh, not many uh, new business, uh, new uh, uh, <coughs> ventures uh, will start. Uh, I do understand uh, it's very difficult to uh, correct funds uh, to start the businesses at first. Uh, venture capital uh, is not so big uh, compared to the United States. So we are uh, trying to uh, uh, emphasize the, the, the importance and, uh, and uh, tell them uh, you, you can get tax incentives. But still, uh, it's not enough. Uh, maybe uh, so we have been talking about we need some kind of uh, Silicon Valley type of uh, community uh, and uh, it's not that it's not uh, the, this, the discussion of money itself uh, there's some type of uh, uh, coordinators uh, of business and also some open relationship between uh, the United universities and uh, uh, corporate managers. Uh, this kind of uh, atmosphere are uh, not enough in Japan. Uh, this is our big uh, uh, task uh, we are talking about, yes. Okay, so it's time to call to an end of this very interesting session. So since uh, Mr. Yamamoto is a good advisor, I, on behalf of the CREB, I will uh, ask you to advise the members of the government, new and old, to consider coming to this CREB okay. to <laughs> speak and uh, explain sure. their policies. And uh, so we thank you very much for your uh, very interesting okay, uh, very session. Thank you. And, uh,
I give you also a uh, one year membership oh. of this club. Okay. So you can come anytime and uh, bring also people oh, that you, you advise. Thank you. Thank you.